Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode in Roll, Release, Recover series. And this one is for all you pickleball players. I'm gonna show you two different ways to warm up and some nice ways to stretch out when you're done playing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do dynamic warm up. I'm gonna show it um, standing up, something you can do at the courts, and then I'll show another example of it on the foam roller. So I'll probably just show everything on one side it might, so it doesn't take so long, and then you can kind of take what you like, see what feels good on your body, and take it with you the next time you play pickleball. So especially if you play pickleball in the morning, you know you don't want to um, play cold, and you don't want to go into any kind of static stretching where you're holding a stretch without warming up the muscles. That's what we're going to do first. And we're going to start with empty coat sleeves. So my feet are a little bit wider than hips width, and I'm just swinging my shoulders and slapping my hand on the opposite hip. It's a good way to warm up the waist, get some rotation, warm up the shoulders, and then I want you to start lifting that opposite heel. This is dynamic stretching. This is dynamic warming, warm up. Good. That's empty coat sleeves. Then we're gonna do shoulder slaps, kind of like what the swimmers do. So slight bend in your knees, open wide, chin is up, standing nice and tall, and just opening and slapping the shoulders. Great. Then what we wanna do is we wanna put the knees and the hips and the ankles and through all different ranges of motion. So you can just do some knee pulls. So we're just doing high knees. You can even grab one and hold. Grab one and hold, as long as you don't turn it into a static hold and force the muscle into a stretch while it's cold. We do the static stretching after we play. Then you can begin to do hamstring butt kicks. So you're standing up nice and tall, shoulders are back. Feels good on the hamstrings. Now we're going to just kick forward and back. Forward and back. Actually, I'm gonna do it on the other side because it feels so good. Then you can turn that into a straight leg kick where you reach for the toes. Really important that you stand up nice and tall, bend your knee as much as you need to, just so you start to really feel it in that hamstring. Good, and then you wanna get the outer glute so you get into a nice low squat. You can put your hands on your hips. You can bring your hands behind your back, hands to heart center or just hands resting on your thighs, and you're just going to walk, lateral walk, side to side, make it a nice big stretch. Really good to lead with the heel and bring the toe in, and stretch, and walk. Good, dynamic warm up. And the other thing is, is you can hold on to the fence, or you can hold on to, you know, one of the benches or the chairs that's on the court if you're doing your warm up at the court. And we're just going to do hip circles. Big circles with a bent knee in one direction, circles in the other direction. Good. Then I'm going to hold my knee still and I'm just going to stir the pot. So the only thing that's moving is my shin and my ankle, lower leg. Good. Then I'm going to hold that still and I'm going to circle out my ankle. Great. And then you might like this kicking forward and back better, actually holding on to the wall, holding on to the fence, or holding on to a chair. So I'm kicking forward and back, flexion and extension, and then I'm going to swing out to the side and in across the midline for adduction and abduction. Swing it. You can do toes out, heel in. You can do toe in, heel out. Good. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do calf raises. You can hold on to that fence and hold on to the wall. We're just going to lift and lower and lift. And so we're trying to warm up the calves. Good. So that's one way to warm up before you play pickleball. The other way is to work on your foam roller. Um, so what we're going to do is start at the bottom of the leg and kind of work our way up. So we're going to work the back of the ankles. So you can cross your feet over and just roll from side to side, especially if you flex the ankles so that the toes are coming towards the knee. 
That feels really good and you can work your way up your calf and really get some pressure with that top foot or just kind of roll. So we're kind of rolling the ankle, rolling the bottom of the calf. And you can work it up into the more meaty part of the calf. I like to rock and span from side to side. So compressing the muscles and the connective tissue using the roller um, increases the circulation and eliminates waste in that area and really warms up the muscle. So it's a great thing to do if you don't want to do the other dynamic stretches or you can do a combination of them both. Good, we're going to work our way up to our hamstrings, avoiding the back of the knees. So I just have the roller underneath my hamstring and I'm using my hands down by my hips. I'm lifting my hips, I'm lifting up my feet and I'm rolling the length of the hamstring and I'm going to rock from side to side. Feels really good. I'm going to roll over to the other side and then I'm just going to scoop forward and sit on the roller with my hands directly underneath my shoulders and I'm going to just drop my knees to the right and roll out my glute. I'm going to scoop down so the roller goes kind of all the way up to my, the top of my glute. You can even come down to your forearm and I'm also going to span and rock from side to side. I'm engaging my core and I'm breathing and I'm moving pretty slowly. When we compress our muscles and the connective tissue when using rollers and balls, the body really responds with slow movement. So this is one way to get at your glutes on the, um, on the roller. I'm just going to do the other side because it feels so good. The other thing that you can do is you can do a seated figure four where you bring your knee up, you bring your ankle up on top of the opposite leg. So my right ankle is on top of my left thigh and I'm going to drop my knee down and roll my torso to the right and that really exposes the outer glute muscle here and I can roll in here and I can span from side to side. Next thing we're going to do is bring the roller onto the quads and warm up the quads. So I'm in a forearm plank, my belly is engaged, and I'm rolling and avoiding my knees, but I'm scooting the roller the full length of my quad. And I can kind of roll my body to the right and get the outer right part of the quad. I can roll my body to the left and get the inner part of that quad. I can bring my legs wide and my heels together and roll this way. And you can kind of find a static compression and just bend and extend and work your way up the quad muscle there. So this is how we're warming up. Warming up the lower body, getting ready for pickleball. Good. So you just basically work the whole, the whole leg. Um, and then we're gonna work, we're just gonna do a little bit on the shoulders. So you can sit down with your roller behind you. I'm going to interlace my hands above my, behind my, my head. And I'm just going to walk down so that the roller is high on my shoulders. And I'm just lifting and lowering my hips. Lifting and lowering. My knees are underneath my my ankles are underneath my knees, my, my core is engaged, and you can keep it high, you can roll, kind of bring one elbow down, reach for the bottom, reach for the ankle. That gets the shoulder, you can bring it down a little bit more. Once you get down towards the rib cage, it's kind of hard to roll that area. So drop your hips down and just arch your back, protecting it with the head and the hands, and then lift your hips and either work up the vertebra or down the vertebra, but not going down the back so far that it gets in the way of your ability to breathe. So if I come down real low on my, on my rib cage, it's getting a little tough here for me to arch my back. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go up one and just lay back and just arch, flex and extend the spine 
right over the back of the roller. It feels really good. Great. And then roll to one side and press yourself up. So this is what would get you ready to play pickleball. Let's assume that you've just played pickleball and you're done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do dynamic stretching. And this is the really good stretching that we can do once our body is warm. So if you wanna stretch right at the court, here's one thing that you can do. We really wanna focus on our calf muscles. A lot of people are tearing their Achilles um, and hurting their knees playing pickleball. So there's two ways to stretch. So I've got my left foot forward and I've got my right foot back. And I've got my fingers up against the wall. I want to adjust my stance so that when I bend my front knee, my knee doesn't go over my toes. So I'm going to bring my toes pretty close to the wall. And my back foot is facing, my toes are facing forward, and my heel is, stays driving down onto the mat. So keeping the back knee down, slight bend in, keeping my back heel down, slight bend to the back knee. I'm going to bend into my front knee and feel a stretch in the big quad, in the big um, calf muscle in the back, the gastroc. Try not to roll to the pinky edge of this back foot. You can, that's a dynamic stretch. You can just, a static stretch. You can just stay right in here. Now there's another muscle below there that attaches to the Achilles tendon. I'm gonna walk my right foot in. I'm gonna keep my front foot where it is. I'm gonna bend both knees, but rather than leaning my body forward, I'm gonna keep my ears over my shoulders, shoulders over my hips, and I'm gonna bend both knees. It's really weird and hard to bend this back knee because we're so used to having that back leg straight. And if you bend into this, and kind of press with your fingertips, you'll feel the stretch real down low by your ankle. And that's really important. That's a, that's a muscle that we rarely stretch, so that's a good one. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to stretch our quad. You can hold onto a chair, you can hold onto the fence. You're just going to bend your knee, grab onto your foot from behind, and I'm going to turn facing forward. I want you to squeeze your knees together. And then do like a little abdominal crunch where you're knitting your low ribs in and tucking your tailbone under, squeezing your heel towards your glute. So the knee drives down towards the floor or towards the court. Good, so that's the, the way, that's a static stretch for the quad. Another way that we can stretch holding on to the chair or how holding on to the fence is the figure four. We just did this stretch on the roller and now we're gonna do it holding on. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking about knocking a door closed with my left glute. So my right ankle is on top of my left foot, my left thigh, and I'm gonna reach that glute back and flare this right knee out to the right and feel a nice stretch all on the outside of the hip and the glute. Great. So the next thing you can do is with that same leg, you can do the opposite leg because you have to hold on. Bring your leg up to hip height and just pull that knee across and get a nice stretch through the outer hip. Notice that my shoulders are facing forward and I'm just pulling the knee across. Great. Next thing you want to do is stretch your shoulders. So I've got my arm on the wall. You can do this on the fence at the court. And I'm stepping one foot forward and one foot back. And my elbow is kind of behind me. Back this way, shoulder level. And I'm just going to twist to the right. So my left arm is on the wall. I'm bringing my left rib cage over to the right and stretching out the front of the shoulder. The other thing you can do is you can bring your arm up like a Y and bring that hand flat on the wall, bring the hip to the wall, and then start to walk the hand down and get a nice big stretch. So that's a way you can stretch out your shoulders. The other thing we can do is just a twist. Bring your hands behind your head, slight bend in the knees, and just twist without the hips rotating. Twist through the trunk. And you can hold. Hold the twist, maybe grab onto that chair behind you. Twist the other side. Good. 
Great, and then we'll do a little forearm and wrist stretch. So to stretch the top of the forearm, you bring the hand out, palm faces towards you, other hand, press the hands together, lower your shoulder blade down, and straighten out the arm with a little tiny bend in the elbow. Then we can do the other way, palm faces out, draw the fingers back, draw the shoulder blade down. It's like you're trying to slide your shoulder blade down into your back pocket. Good, you would do that on, obviously on both sides. And then here's one of my favorites, it's the wrist bind. Arms are out in front, cross your right arm over your left. Rotate so that your hands come face each other, make a, make a fist. Draw your shoulder blades down. So first draw your shoulder blades all the way up to your ears. That's not where I want you to be. We're gonna draw your shoulders all the way down. And then an inhale, you're gonna bring your fist towards your chest. And exhale, extend out, trying to keep your palms as close together as possible, sitting up tall and not letting your shoulders shrug up to your ears. Then you're gonna come back in and extend out. This is called a wrist bind. Then you're gonna try the other hand on top. Left forearm on top of the right. Hands face each other, make a fist. Draw the shoulder blades down. Belly is pulled in, core is engaged. Inhale, exhale. You're gonna find that one side is a lot tighter than the other. Okay, so we went through two different ways to dynamic stretch and warm up before pickleball. We did some static stretches for after pickleball. Stay safe, have fun, come back and check out my other videos. Bye-bye.